All right, what up, everybody? It's your boy BQ. Welcome back to the channel. Reporting live once again from the cell phone. Gonna talk briefly about Eric Young addressing the TNA audience at No Surrender. Um, if you haven't seen the video that has surfaced online, the TNA locker room came out and Eric Young spoke to the fans. Uh, it was very similar to the way that Hard to Kill kicked off, except that Eric Young was talking to the the audience, the, uh, the televised audience and the fans. This was not necessarily something intended to be released. I think it was fan footage that came out, but I'm, I'm sure they also expected that it would make its rounds. And um, I think something that we need to take away from all that is the roster isn't giving up yet. And us as fans, we should not give up for that reason, because if the wrestlers are not, then it's up to us to also stay as strong as possible with the direction going forward. And, you know, to be totally honest with you, as the time has passed since the initial announcement, I would say the majority of the fan base, I don't want to say they've forgotten about it, but I really think the majority of the fan base is just kind of watching as normal and moving forward. There's not as much like chatter about Scott and there's an initial shock that happens with big news releases. There's just initial, just the initial shock overall. And I think now that we are, we have had some time to really think about things, to have a level head. I feel that people right now are, are, are kind of saying to themselves, you know what? Is Scott being gone that much of a game changer as far as what we're going to see on television? I think where everyone started freaking out was that we were aware morale was extremely high backstage. And we had someone very, very passionate running the company that loved the company, that wanted to be there. I mean, to the point that he almost paid $10 million for it, which or 10, 12. I don't remember what the number was. Uh, I would have never guessed that that TNA was worth anything over four, $4 million, to be honest with you. So uh, if, if that's what the valuation is, awesome. Good news, you know. But I think we, we knew that someone was in charge who really cared. And I think that's, as much as we're worried about that, we also just knew that mor morale was high and the wrestlers wanted him there. And if you've been following TNA for a while, you know that, I mean, this hasn't been an issue in quite some time, but you know there's always the, the men and women who would come and go and would get disgruntled and, and want out, and we just haven't really seen very much of that in the last several years. So to us as fans, when we know Scott's out the door, we start immediately speculating, well, who's next? Who's leaving next? Which wrestlers are out the door next? You know, I, I was saying the same thing on the channel. Like, hey, so, people are going to leave. I, I was pretty positive of it. I was like, some of these top stars might be done. But it just seems like they're all on the same page to to not undo what they've been working so hard to do and working so hard to achieve the past several months. And, it, you know, it's all rainbows right now, but I'm going to keep saying it. There's When that first domino falls of someone who's who wants out, we're going to see how they react to it. Are they going to handle it like they did with Broken Matt and Jeff at one, one, one uh, point in time where it was a total shit show and a horrible way to start off the Anthem era? Or have they learned since those days? We don't really know. We're going to see what happens. But it just seems like, as fans, we do need to band together and just enjoy the product for what it is and not really worry about that. Because for all we know, and, and I kind of laughed at some people who said this on Twitter, for all we know, the product could be better. There's, there's, you know, There was people out there looking for silver linings and, and trying to make this as positive as possible. It's like, well, maybe it'll be better. It's a little hard to envision that. But if you think of Scott's involvement creatively, 
you know, he was he was a prominent fixture on the show, which I thought was a mistake. I just don't think he's a good on-screen character. I mean, I, he's better than like having Tony Khan on there or something, but uh, he, you know, we don't know that he, he's not the best on-screen character in the world. Creatively, the booking, like there hasn't really been much storytelling going on in in the last year. You know, like we got to this point where when Josh was the champion, the show seemed to be structured around having really good matches and good wrestling, which is part of things, absolutely. But I think they were a little creatively bankrupt when it came to Josh Alexander. So they said, hey, the rest of the show, instead of trying to make it like compelling with storylines, let's make the company about wrestling. And that's that's kind of where I felt the direction was going for a while. So creatively the booking like was it that great you know and i'm not saying i'm not, i'm changing my mind on the impact of him leaving but i'm just more optimistic and open minded now that you know maybe i'm not saying it's a good thing that he's leaving but i'm 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 just optimistic that you know maybe it's not going to be so bad if the wrestlers are are saying hey it's not going to be so bad then we have no reason to to think that but eric young did a really good job I don't know how much of that was off the cuff, how much was prepared. He was very uh, passionate, you know, fired up. And, you know, it, it was a great video if you haven't seen it already. You know what have really would have ruined this? Thank God they rebranded a TNA. If they would have played, because they played uh, across the line after he was done. Imagine if they fucking played We Own the Night. That he cuts this, I'm not going to call it a promo, but a speech to the live audience. It's passionate. It's got fire. You know, he had tears. I thought Moose, as the world champion, standing behind him was a great touch. I thought Jordan Gray should have been with him as well, but I thought that was a really good touch rather than him just in the back with the rest. But imagine, all these things happen, and then it's, whoa, oh, we own the Nat. Can you, that would have, like, undone everything. That would have been a complete fucking bomb. So, um... I know I would have reacted pretty negatively to it. We know that already. But if you haven't checked the video out online, it, it's definitely surfacing out there on Twitter and, and Facebook. People people got the link, so definitely ask for it. But I definitely am taking from that. You know what? The wrestlers are still on board. There's no reason for any of us to jump ship. And it just, you know, it is very important that we just try to remain optimistic at this point.